Kid, seriously. Welcome to the AAF Update. It's me, Maya Madrid, here giving you the scores and analysis from everyone's favorite startup football league. It's the Alliance of American Football. Big thank you here to Luke Neitzel, our editor, peanut gallery, and all-around good guy. Huge news this week as Johnny Manziel signed with the league. The, the right of first refusal went to former Cowboy fullback Daryl Johnson, who's the general manager of the San Antonio Commanders. But the first-year GM explained he didn't feel the move would make the team better. From there, it went in reverse order of records, so Memphis had the option, and they signed the former Heisman Trophy winner. Manziel was suspended and excused from the CFL for violating the agreement he had with them when he signed. What he did, we're not sure of. But it was the league who threw him out and not the Montreal Alouettes, his team. Johnny Football, of course, was only in Canada because of the litany of drama that has followed him since his college days. Let's go through the rap sheet, shall we, Luke? Also, I hope you mention how fast his uh, fiance can run a mile. Well, that's, uh, that's going to be one of the things we talk about. Arrested for disorderly conduct in tw- 2012 when he was with a friend who shouted racial slurs and a shoving match broke out. 2013, accepted payments while still an athlete and making a fool of himself at the Manning Passing Camp. In 2014, he threw a water bomb. 2015, he allegedly beat up his girlfriend and then got thrown off the Browns after lying about partying. 2016, it was leaked to the press about some of his drug exploits. He entered the NFL Substance Abuse Program. Another domestic violence allegation against the same woman. He allegedly pulled her hair and told her he would kill her and kill himself. For the record, he has blamed those problems on being bi- bipolar. So, Luke, Johnny Manziel, member of the AAF, what do you think about this for the league? Uh, I get it. it it's going to get attention. It's going to get eyes. And my guess is, is they have morality clauses built into this contract. So if he goes and lets them down immediately, like a lot of us are probably betting on him to do, I imagine they have some type of outer protection to cut him and then he can move on to the XFL, which I I think most of us thought he was going to do initially because they just seemed like a league that would be more willing to do this. But, you know, the the AFL needs to keep momentum going, or the AAF, excuse me, they need to keep momentum going. They need to keep attention to them. And whether you love him or hate him, he is going to get that for them, at least for a little bit. And if he can maybe look at this as a last chance, get himself a little bit together and do something on the field, maybe this is a chance for him to revitalize his career because he can't have many of those left. So I can't say that I'm personally cheering for him to succeed, but I understand why the league would do this. Yeah, I agree. This this makes total sense from the league. I mean, the whole league is about redemption, right? That's the whole thing that they sell. And there are lots of guys with checkered pass, and we've alluded to it before on the show, guys with really bad pass uh, who have gotten opportunities in the AAF. And so from that perspective, he fits what they're trying to do, the redemption model of the league. From Memphis's perspective, it also makes a lot of sense. You know, they tried the whole Christian Hackenberg uh, experiment. It didn't work. Then they brought in Zach Medenberger. Um, he got hurt, another, another doofus. And, um, and then they had a third quarterback who, who played all, way, uh, all right, and we'll talk about him a little bit later in the show. But really, from Memphis' perspective, Singletary is the worst. I mean, he has the worst team in the league. They are getting quarterbacks drilled left and right, and they need a spark at the very least to just sell tickets. And so from Memphis' perspective, it makes a lot of sense. It obviously makes sense from – Johnny Manziel's standpoint, the place to play. And I don't know, some people had alluded to him getting kicked out of the CFL on purpose so that he could get back to America and get in this situation. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We, we just don't know at this point exactly what happened other than he was banned by the league. So that sounds pretty serious. I mean, I think like if you could just ask to be released, things would be fine. You don't really want to be banned from the league. It makes sense for a lot of people, but like you said, man, I I hate a couple things about this. I don't particularly like Johnny Menzel. I don't particularly like Memphis Express, and I don't particularly like a lot of the players on the Memphis Express. So it kind of fits perfectly for my rooting habits because I can't stand that entire team. And so he went to my most hated team in the league, and I'm going to be rooting against him like crazy. I hope he fails. I think he probably will fail his entire time in professional football. He's thrown, I think, one more interception than he has touchdowns. 
Uh, he was bad in the NFL. He was bad in the spring league. He was bad in the CFL, and he's going to be bad in the AFL or AF, excuse me, in the Alliance. And um, he kind of gets what he deserves. And I, I kind of, you know, his dad had said that jail was the best place for him so that he hopes that he doesn't have to bury him. And you know what? I agree with his dad. Jail would be the best place for this dude. So let's go ahead and get to the games, and we'll see kind of how Johnny Johnny Football manages uh, coming up here. I'm not sure when he'll play. He just had his first practice today. But first game of this past weekend was Salt Lake at home versus Memphis, and this one was all Stallions. The Express had to play their third quarterback of the year. That was Brandon Silvers. We talked about him just now. And they had a lot of difficulty running the ball against Salt Lake's defense. Josh Woodrum threw for 243, two scores, and the Stallions made this one look easy as 22-9. In shocking news, Luke, our boy, Steve Spurrier, has now lost his first AAF game. Surprisingly, it was at home, and even more surprisingly, it was the Arizona Hotshots, who have had so many problems over the last couple weeks here. It looked great at the beginning of the season, and then the bottom fell out. So this game was like Bizarro World, though, as it was the Apollos' turn to give the ball away. Orlando still moved the ball well, but weren't able to score as much as they needed to. And hats off to Arizona quarterback John Wolford. He had some really bad games recently after after starting off the year. He writes the ship, and the hot shots knock off your undefeated Apollos, 22-17. to 17. So 5-1 uh, and one now for, for Orlando. We jinxed them last week after saying they wouldn't lose all year. We sure did. We sure did. It's my fault. I take full responsibility. Third game of the week was all San Antonio. Why don't they need Jenny Manziel? Why do they turn it down? Because they're one of the hottest teams in the league, and they just steamrolled Atlanta. Aaron Murray... Uh, who had Atlanta on a two-game winning streak, put together two really good games, and it was great, but it all came for naught because the Commanders just kicked the living tar out of him. It was a blowout, 37-6. to six. Murray didn't even finish the game. He was pulled um, for their third-string quarterback at this point. Hey, the final game was probably the week's most exciting. My Birmingham Iron were locked in a back-and-forth matchup with the San Diego Fleet. You may remember last week I picked against my team, and I picked the Fleet – and said that new iron quarterback Keith Price may not be able to get the job done. Well, I was kind of right, because they benched that dude right like in the first quarter. And so they brought back Luis Perez, and they just had him like throw like crazy. Like before when they had Perez in, they were just running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. And he threw for like, I want to say it was like 52 times with, between him and Price. Like, they just chucked it all over the field. It was back and forth. And in the end, Perez is a San Diego kid, so it was his hometown. I let them down the field. They kicked a field goal to win it at the gun, and they improved to four and two. So um, this week, games are going to be on uh, TNT picked up another game. So there'll be another game on TNT. So more good news uh, for the league. But let's get to the rankings. Number eight, Luke's favorite team, the Memphis Express. They suck, and they have three quarterbacks on the roster who I hate. So this is awesome. Number seven, after rising two spots, Atlanta falls back down. They had those two nice games and a little bit of a streak there. But, man, they just got their butts kicked worse. That was the biggest blowout, I think, of the year so far. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, in the professional leagues, usually teams have short memories because the guys are pretty mentally tough. But in college, these games affect, and it'll be interesting to see if Atlanta is able to rebound. Number six, Salt Lake put together another game, looked pretty good. But that's always when they're about to let me down. So I'm just going to move them up one spot to six here because I've been burned too many times, even though they have my favorite player in the league, Carter Schultz. Number five, I'm going to go Arizona moving up to five. They knocked off the Apollos uh, that you and I both anointed as Alliance champs last week. But they need to keep protecting the football like they did this week. Uh, they're plenty talented, but if they, if they backslide and start turning the ball over, they're going to struggle. Number four, staying pat, San Diego Fleet. They were four last week, and the close matchup at home lost to, to, to the Iron, so we're going to keep them in the same spot. Likewise, with number three, they beat uh, to the Birmingham Iron. They beat the Fleet, but they have some serious questions uh, with what their plan is going to be at quarterback. Are they going to go back to Price? Are they going to go to Perez? Are they going to go back and forth the whole year? Um, so they need to pretty much figure it out despite their 4-2 and two record. Number two, we're going to stay. I don't feel good about this. We're going to stay San Antonio. Uh, the Commanders are pretty darn good right now. They look like the team to beat. They've been the hottest team in the league. But let's not forget, Luke, Apollos played at San Antonio and kicked the crap out of them. So we're going to keep San Antonio at number two because to be the man, you got to beat the man. 
And if the commanders want to be great, they're going to have to get a better record than our guy. Number one, Steve Spurrier, Apollos of Orlando. Little tarnish on that varnish after the loss, but they played a bad game, and Arizona played a good one, and that's just kind of how it rolls. Some days you're going to play a bad, bad game. So let's get to the picks. Luke, last week I went 2-2 two and two with the picks. Now, I would have gone 3-1, and one, but uh, I picked – Orlando, even though I should have picked against them. And I picked against my team, the Iron, and they won at the gun. So, I mean, overall, at 2-2, two and two, I'm happy with that. This is the week, man. This is the week when I get back to 500, we're going to run the table at 4-0, and and everything's going to get back to where it needs to be. So, game one, Orlando at Atlanta. This one's going to be brutal. Orlando is mad, and Spurrier is mad. It's going to be all Orlando. Game two. Salt Lake at San Antonio. Salt Lake has a really good defense, but they're going to come back down to earth as they come down from the mountains. They're on the road, so I'm going to take the second-best team in the league with the best home field advantage at San Antonio. Game three, two teams at three and three. I'm stuck between how much I don't like Neuheisel because he's a UCLA guy and uh, how much I despise uh, Mike Marks' face. So... I didn't pick Arizona last week, and I got burned. And I did pick, pick San Diego, and I got burned. So, since I hate Marks' face, the hot shots are going to win this one. Game four, Ahern against Johnny Manziel. Are you serious? He's gonna, I don't know if he's going to start the game. I don't know if he's going to play. But this is a dude who turns the ball over, and this is the ball away. So, this is about the most perfect game. My team against Johnny Manziel, I would just love to see him turn the ball over five times. It's going to be beautiful. So there we go. It's going to be iron, iron, iron. Luke, what questions do you have, man? Well, just following up from last week, I was hoping you could give us an update on what Seattle was going to do this week. Oh, yes, yeah. Seattle. That was, that was embarrassing. You know why it happened? Uh, Dennis Erickson was the coach of the Seahawks, and so it just sticks in my mind. They have the silver helmets and, you know, and, yeah. That was embarrassing. Uh, what's your, what's your, where are you setting the over under? How many games does Johnny Manziel play in the AAF career? Three. Three. He'll play this week, I think. He'll start next week. And then he'll play in the third game. And by then, they'll be done with him. I, th- I bet you Mettenberger's back. And I think he's released by the end of the year. I mean, this dude, he, he went like at most like two years without getting in trouble. And he's not even really all that good. Like, you can make the argument that Mike Evans, um, the wide receiver who plays for Tampa Bay now, you can make the argument that he basically made Johnny Manziel. And I just made that argument. So just go ahead and flame me in the comments if you hear that and that pisses you off. But he's just not very good. How long will he be the biggest name in AAF history? That's a great question. Because Blake Bortles just did sign a contract. Uh, he's going to L.A. Hmm. I wonder who that would be. Who's going to be out of the league? Luke, that's a great question. Because you'd have to say right now he's the biggest name. He is, yeah. I mean, I think the, the biggest name before him would be Trent Richardson, yeah. who finally the Iron decided they were sick of watching run right up the middle, right into the center's butt for two yards every single play. It's been so embarrassing. So, yeah, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of who might rival him. Who? Which train wreck? You know who... Uh, <laughs> he'll still be uh I, I would say for the rest of you know for the rest of this 365 days but i wouldn't be surprised if tyreek hill ends up in the aaf i don't know if you heard the news about him today he's the uh, oh, amazing yeah. wide receiver from the chiefs and he is being investigated for two incidences of child child abuse and now his son has a broken arm a mysterious broken arm so it doesn't look good for him I think Hill will be AAF and be a better player because he's just amazing. But Manziel still has the name recognition. It's too bad because this is going to end badly. You know what didn't end badly? This show. So I'd like to thank everybody. Uh, if you want to reach out to the show, feel free to find us out on Twitter. You can reach me at MyMadrid. Enjoy the games this week, and we'll see you next week.